A few weeks have elapsed since I inadvertently landed myself in the middle of a string of sexual assault and rape allegations against Sam Pepper. In that time, international news media outlets have picked up the story. Many YouTubers have made amazing videos on the topic, which I'll put links to in the description. As a result, Sam was dropped from most YouTube conventions, he lost a corporate sponsorship, and from what I can tell, he was dropped from the YouTube Partner Program. This is all because you spoke out, and we should all be really proud of the community taking sexual assault seriously. That is amazing. That said, I am still unsettled because there have been no legal consequences. Four reports of alleged sexual assault and rape have been filed with the police. BBC and Channel 4 uncovered that in July, Sam was investigated by LAPD on sodomy charges, but the case was dropped because she didn't want to testify. The Daily Dot also profiled a young woman who was allegedly raped and then threatened by Sam when she considered taking legal action. Sam has responded to all of this by um, ignoring it, pretending that none of it ever happened, of course. He's also blocked me. I've continued to receive a tidal wave of threats and hate mail from his fans. And while there are still talks of pressing charges, nobody has yet, and as a result, Sam walks free, unscathed by the legal system, and sadly, that is normal. 97%, that's the percentage of sexual predators that are never punished by the legal system for their crimes. Six times, that's the average number of times that a predator will violate someone. If you Google rapist walks free, you'll be met with thousands of disturbing stories of predators of all kinds, some with mounds of evidence piled against them who pay no price. What? How does this happen? For one thing, our culture is generally dismissive of rape. People ardently defend rapists and blame the victim for it. The victim blames themselves and rape myths flourish. That alone closes the door to justice for the majority of people, for the minority that do pursue justice, it is an uphill battle. Rape is very difficult to prosecute. It's a crime that happens behind closed doors, there's usually no witnesses, there's usually no physical marks. So in court, it ends up being their word versus the rapist word, and overwhelmingly people believe the rapist. From the police investigator meant to help them to the jury that's supposed to serve justice. Multiple studies throughout the decades have found that police do not believe women who report rape. This translates into police investigations which involve harassment and intimidation of the victim. It's actually so common that the phenomenon has been dubbed academically as the second rape. Juries are also unbelieving of victims and have let rapists walk free because they were wearing tight pants or they were drunk at the time. Then there's the fact that a criminal case can take months and requires the survivor to repeat the story 10, 12 times. They have to testify in court, be examined, ask invasive questions to try to paint them as a liar or a slut who really wanted it, all in front of their rapists, the rapist's lawyer, the jury, and other people that are doubting them. They have to go through all of this and accept that the chance of finding closure is very small and there's a good possibility that the rapist will shoot them a smile and walk out those doors. It's all incredibly inhumane. 97% walk free. And then the UN and the White House and all the good people of the world are sitting there scratching their heads asking why this happens so often. Well, maybe it's because rapists know that they'll be defended both within and without the legal system. No, there will be no real consequences. Maybe it's because our justice system places an enormous burden on victims. Maybe it's because 97% of predators are left alone to do it again and again and again. To hit block, to leave it in the past, to see it as a rough career patch, and with time, to quietly keep preying on new, unknowing people. Business as usual. And for me, in my wee little heart, that's the worst part of it all. That this is business as usual for the sand peppers of YouTube and of the world. Thank you again for all of your support in this situation. I am going to keep working on this, but I will be resuming my regular Sex Plus videos now that I'm back from tour next week. I have some great topics lined up that I'm really excited about, and I hope that you enjoy them. Fight on, my dears. Mwah!